There are, of course, different ways to transfer files into your USB storage. But today I'm going to show you a method that maybe some of you are not all too familiar with or maybe may not even know altogether. Normally, of course, this is done the old fashioned way via PC, but that's not what we're doing. We will be focusing primarily using only your smart devices, transferring a file that you have in your device to your USB storage. And for most of you, of course, this will be your phone. And when I say that, you probably instantly think about the OTG method. But no, we're not going to do that either. No PC, no OTG. You can actually upload files from your phone straight to your USB without your USB being connected at all to your phone or anywhere near your phone. As a matter of fact, many of you may be able to do this while you leave your USB behind at home and you could be away from home altogether at work, at school, even on vacation, and you could be loading up files straight to that storage device. And as an added bonus, at the end of the video, I'm even going to show you how to transfer files from some cloud services like your Google Drive straight to your USB without the file even going through your phone at all. You got a lot of stuff to cover, guys. So let's go ahead and kick that intro so we can get started. Hey guys and welcome to the video and yeah here today we're going to achieve all that good stuff by connecting that USB storage to something that you more than likely already have and that is your router. So most routers allow you to access these USB storages via FTP. The router will assign it an IP address and you can access it from pretty much any device on your home network that has a browser um, and or an FTP client installed in it. Some however most, if not almost all, newer routers also give you an address so that you can access this USB storage from the internet when you're out of your home network. So we'll talk more about that later. There are two prerequisites here. You need, obviously, to have a USB port on your router, and you also need to know how to log into your router. So you need to have those administrative privileges, in other words, the a username and password that allows you to log into your router so you can set everything up. It came with the instructions of your router. If not, you can Google the exact make and model and you should find the uh, owner's manual or user's guide somewhere online. Now my setup is like this one where it's the router connected to my internet service provider's modem. You may have an all-in-one type deal where it's a modem and it's a router all-in-one, so just one device. From this point forward, whenever I say router, I mean whatever it is you're using, whether it's the modem router all in one or whether it's a standalone router. OK, so I need to knock out some housekeeping stuff out of the way here real quick. Um, later on in the video, I'll be using my phone as an example, which is an Android. If you're using an Apple, just find you know, whatever app or apps are comparable. Obviously, again, you need to have admin access to your router. I'm not going to baby this video. I'll be covering some stuff here and there. You know, maybe some of it might be kind of noobish, but you should know the difference between like FTP server, FTP client, uploading, downloading files and all that good stuff. You also need to know, although I'm going to be covering, you know, some of this stuff as we go through this tutorial, you need to know that not all routers are the same. There's a million of them out there. Some, um, you know, will read USB storages that are in NTFS or FAT32 format. Um, some may even do XFAT. Older routers will only see, you know, USBs that are FAT or FAT32. Every router pretty much has a size limitation. So some may read storages that are only up to like 64 gig, 128 gig, while newer ones, you know, may go up to a terabyte, two terabytes or even more. Some only allow you to access the USB locally via FTP. And of course, as I said before, some will allow you to do it over the Internet. Again, each one has its own set of, you know, guidelines, features, limitations, whatever you want to call it. So your results may vary. Okay, so I'm here logged into my TP-Link router 
and because this is geared more for you guys out there who are intermediate and advanced users you should already know how to do this you can just log in through your browser i'm doing it here on my pc but of course this can be done from your smart device as well as long as you're connected to your home network i'm in my usb settings section right here i have my advanced tab clicked Again, <clears throat> what displays for you and what options you have will differ. Um, right here, I only have a couple of options, including safely remove, but I can also make this USB active or deactivate it right from here without having to remove it physically from the router itself. So let me go ahead and go into my sharing access page. Okay, so here I am at the sharing access page. Yours, of course, may be called something different, but ultimately, guys, where you need to get to is the point in your router where it shows you what the IP addresses are for the USB storage device that you've attached to the router. So for TP-Link, in my particular model, it's very easy. Once I plug it in, it just pops up these IP addresses one IP for use within my home network, which is right here, and then a unique one down here, that's why I'm blocking it, for use via the internet. So once you have these numbers, it's pretty much simple and straightforward from here. You would use those IP addresses the same way you use any other ones when you want to FTP. When you're in your home network, you can use this one uh, in your FTP client or in your browser. When you are away from home, and you're using let's say your phone or another pc or whatever um, as long as you have an ftp client you know in that device you can just then use the ip that it gave you for use via the internet put it into that ftp client that you have on your phone or whatever the device is and you can access the usb that way you could even of course do it through the browser just remember anytime you access a usb through the browser you can just download files only via the FTP client, you can do pretty much everything else. Okay, so I scrolled down a bit here on my sharing access page, and this is the last of the options that I have. Again, your options will vary. Um, normally, I'm the only one that accesses my USB, so I have the share all function turned on all the time, but for training purposes here, I went ahead and turned it off. Now, mine has the option where I can specify which folders I want to have access to on the USB or somebody else to have access to on the USB. So when I turn it off, I can come here, click add, this whole big box will open up. Then I can come here to browse and I can uh, designate which folder I or folders I want to have um, access to or another person have access to. And then when that's set up, I can click add and add another folder and so on and so forth. You might think, well, why would you do this? If you have the option where you can access a USB via internet, you can give that IP address to anybody you want, family, friends, whoever. If you have big files, or really any files in general, that you want to share with these people, they can put that number into just their browser and they can download whatever files you have in the folder. So if you don't want them to see the rest of the stuff on your USB, you can set it up this way, provided you have this option, and then they can only get into that folder. You should have other options on there too. You can enable authentication, so that way they have to use a specific um, you know, username and password that you set up, which I highly recommend, and don't use the same one that you use to log into your router. Set it up um, for use with a different file name and password. Um, and yeah, that way they can go ahead and they can download the file straight from you and it'll be faster. They don't have to go through a bunch of spammy stuff. You don't have to waste time uploading it to Google Drive or anywhere else and it just benefits everybody. The enable write access is self-explanatory. If you don't want them to mess with your files and you want them to just download only, make sure you turn that off. Enable media sharing is self-explanatory and at least that's pretty much it here for these options. And before we get to my phone, let me just show you some of the apps that I use here. It's just a couple of apps. This is totally optional. You can use whichever ones you want if you plan on using your phone with this. Anyway, um, the first is File Manager Plus. It doesn't say Plus, but when you install it, it installs the little plus symbol at the end here. This is what the icon looks like. It's made by Flashlight Plus Clock Productivity. It has a great interface. It has pretty much all the capabilities that a file manager has. You don't have to worry about being rooted. Um, 
and you can use this as an FTP server, FTP client, file server. You can connect um, some cloud storage services to it, which we'll be doing here in a bit, like Google Drive. So yeah, a lot of features. The other thing that I use is the advanced download manager. You can use whatever download manager you want. This one just happens to have a lot of features. I'm not going to go over this one at all. I'm not going to show you how to use it because, well, you should know how to use download managers on PCs or phones already. But anyway, in case you don't, um, what this does is that it will allow you to download files straight to your SD card instead of having files downloading straight to the internal storage of your phone. So without a download manager, your internal storage is pretty much going to start getting full and then maybe you have to you know, transfer them to your SD card or transfer them to the USB and make some room. This way, if you have room on an SD card with the download manager, you can set it up so the file downloads right to the card and bypasses your internal storage altogether. Just an idea. Okay, let's move on to the phone now. Okay, so here is my phone and there's a little file manager plus that I was talking about earlier. Let's go into that. And if we go here to the middle box, okay, you can see it says add a remote location. This is your FTP client. Now, as you can see, I've already added my internet FTP, but I'm gonna show you how I did that here in just a second. So let's go ahead and hit add remote location. This is going to be for FTP. And you can type in the FTP IP that it gave you. So in this case, it was one, oh, there we go, 192.168.0.1. I don't need to put colon 21 because the port 21 is already there. If it doesn't require any username or password to sign into, if you left it blank, then just click on anonymous. Obviously, if you set it up with username and password, make sure you type them in there. But in this case, it's anonymous. And then let's hit OK. And there we go. Now, my uh, router calls the SanDisk USB SDA1. I don't know why it does that, but it does. If we go into it, then here is the root of the um, of the USB. So we go back out, right? Now it's set up for use within the home network. Now what you can do when you're setting it up or afterwards, if you want, uh, we can go here, let's just highlight it, edit. And when you're setting it up or right now afterwards, you can just go to more and then you can type something here like home FTP. And then let's hit okay. And there we go. Instead of showing the number, now it shows home FTP. So I already set up the internet one. Obviously, I didn't want you guys to see that number, but everything is all set up. If I double click into it, there we go. It shows me uh, the same files. All right, so let's go back out to the main menu. All right, so now we're out here at the menu. If you want to put a file to your USB, all you have to do is navigate to that file. In this case, mine is in the SD card of my phone. We're going to use this one, the phone to home uh, USB home. So we're going to long press it and then you can click on other ones if you want to, you know, uh, transfer multiple files. But for now, we'll just do this one. I'm going to pick copy. If you pick move, once it transfers the file to your USB, it will delete the file from the original location. So I'm just going to pick copy. Now I'm going to back out, go here to the little remote box. And since I'm in my home network, I'm gonna pick home FTP. But if I was doing this away from home, I would pick the internet FTP. So let's do home for right now. You can see it has three files in the SDA one, which is my USB. Let's go into it. And this is the root. I'm just gonna click paste. And there we go. Now the file is on my USB. And if we go to this one, the internet FTP, and we go in there, you'll see it's not there, but that's because we need to refresh it. Whenever you need to refresh something here, just drag your finger down, it'll refresh, and there it is. And that's pretty much it, very simple. And it goes the other way. If you have something in your USB you wanna transfer to your phone, you'll do it, you'll do the same thing, but in the other direction, as you can see, okay? So let's go ahead and um, let's get out of this. 
Okay, so here we are at my Google Drive, and you can see there's only one here. This um, thing is just set up only for testing stuff and whatnot. So anyway, here this file is called Cloud to USB Internet. Uh, if we minimize this and we go here to the little cloud box, you can hit Add a Cloud Location. And there's only a few choices for now. There may be more later on, but you can go ahead if you have a Google Drive and set that up like I did, which I've done already. It's pretty straightforward to set it up. When you go in there, you'll see I have the same file. Now you're going to do the same thing you did before. Whatever files you want to copy or move from your Google Drive to your USB, you just highlight them. We're going to hit copy in this case. We're going to move back out. Let's go here so we can access our USB. And then if you were away from home and you have this option, choose the internet one. I'm here in my home network. So let's go to home FTP. Let's go to the root. And again, you can put this file wherever you want. It doesn't have to be the root. Um, but for training purposes, we're going to just do root. Let's hit paste. And this might just take a minute. And there we go. So it only took a bit because my phone is it's on here, but the screen is probably off on the on the phone itself so it took a little bit usually it's a lot faster than this uh, but there we go now it appeared if I go out here to the internet one let's go there if I refresh it there we go now it appears and it works the other way you can take a file from your USB and transfer it to your Google Drive or you can take if you wanted to a file from your phone and transfer it to your Google Drive. But for that, you would just use the Google Drive app you have on your phone. Uh, but anyway, that's pretty much it. Oh, and before I go, I was about to end the video. There's one important question that I know you're probably asking, and that is, can I download a file? straight to the USB storage instead of it going to my phone. I really don't think there is a way you can do this except using the method I just showed you, you know, like from the Google Drive uh, to your USB. Um, if you guys know of a way or figure out a way in order to do this, uh, then by all means, you know, let us know. But there are services out there that exist, such as MultiCloud and pCloud that allow you to use a direct download link to download the files straight to one of your cloud drives so you can check those out or something similar and then you know once let's say it's in your google drive then you could transfer it to your usb storage using the method i showed you earlier so that might be kind of a workaround anyway guys sorry this was so long thanks for watching as always don't forget a thumbs up and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one